Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Together and welcome Evangelist Josh Heron as he comes to preach to us tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. What an awesome, awesome day we have had in the presence of the Lord and looking forward to what God has in store for us tonight. And I give honor to your pastor, and I just appreciate him going after it every single service and just pushing this church to higher heights in the spirit. And uh, you will be thankful when you're in heaven one day. And you had a pastor that didn't let you just settle for being in church, but he kept pushing you to go farther in God, and uh, it will be all worth it. I give honor to my wife, and, and I, I appreciate her traveling with me. Just such a, such a warrior going all over the country. And I give honor to all the ministry here by the top of you. Good to see you tonight. Uh, if you have your Bibles, the book of Daniel chapter 2 and the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I will say this at the offset, that if you um, don't agree with what I preach tonight, do me a favor and don't attack me all over the Internet. You keyboard warriors out there, if you don't like it, talk to me face to face. How's that sound? Uh, I, I, I'm going to preach to you something I probably wouldn't preach anywhere else. And it's, 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 it's what I feel in the Holy Ghost. But I feel this church is in a dimension that they can handle it and they can go with it. And so to the spiritual people out there, I'm preaching to you tonight. If you're not a spiritual person, all through the message, get spiritual. So that in the altar call, you can operate and be used of God. Uh, Daniel chapter 2, we're going to read verse 20 through verse 22, and then 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. Daniel 2, 20 through 22, and 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. Aren't you guys proud of how Gentry Jordan is doing awesome things all over the world? Amen. Amen. Love him very, very much, and know the devil's very, very worried about what he's going to do. And I'm just so thankful to, amen, I'm thankful to be in his life. God is really, really using him. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. Someone say the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 9 through verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12 says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I want to preach to you tonight from the subject, Secrets from the Spirit World. Secrets from the Spirit World. Are you with me? Okay. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you're about to do in this place tonight. Thank you for what you did this morning, and thank you for what you've done the last couple weeks. You have been awesome all the time. We love you, and we worship you. Now anoint my mind and loose my tongue. Due to the will of the Holy Ghost, I pray right now. I take dominion and authority over every spirit that's not of God in this house. And I worship you in advance for what you're about to do. And I glorify you because you're the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. Can you clap your hands to Jesus Christ one more time? You may be seated. Thank you for standing. To believe the spirit world is real, you have to understand the, the dimensions of it, first of all. Uh, there, there are at least four dimensions of the spirit world that we know of. Obviously, God, 
God's Spirit being the top dimension. The Spirit of God has no challenger, no competitor, no opposition. The devil is not the uh, adversary of God. He's the adversary of us. He's a creation. God is the creator. So the devil's not God's equal with just as much power and authority as God. I would never understand someone that was a devil worshiper because they're worshiping something that's a creation of the creator with less resources and power than the creator of the universe. And so obviously we understand that God's spirit trumps all things. And when the spirit of God moves in an atmosphere, no matter what's going on in that atmosphere, no matter what's uh, attacking, what demonic spirits are loose or angelic spirits or human spirits, the spirit of God has its way, period. It absolutely will dominate. It doesn't matter how bad the person's heart is. When they walk in the presence of God, if the spirit of God is moving, God can take the most wicked, vile, rebellious heart of a man or a woman and change it in one service and that person could be a completely different person the rest of their life because the spirit of God has entered into their life. Obviously we understand the spirit of God. When you get the Holy Ghost the spirit of God dwells inside of you and now greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We understand that when you have the Holy Ghost you have part of the creator of the universe living inside of you. Everywhere you go hell fears you now not because of you but because of what's inside of you. So obviously hell tempts you with all kind of flesh and everything to get your flesh stirred up because the more flesh there is inside of me operating and the less of the Holy Ghost is operating, the more likely I will not have authority and dominion in the situations that I'm involved in. But if the Spirit of God is completely consuming me, hell worries everywhere I go because I am a threat to their kingdom and so are you. The next dimension is the angelic dimension. That's where, obviously, angels go and back and forth. And, and you know what angels do. The angels of power, angels of messaging spirit, angels that do great things for God. One angel in the Bible killed 185,000 soldiers in one night. I do not agree with people that say you just command angels every day because the Bible said you were made lower than the angels. And if one angel can kill 185,000 people, then I have a difficult time commanding him knowing he can zap me any moment. But angels work for God. Angels are the servants of God like you and I are. As one preacher told me, if you want to see angels, you have to go to where they are sent. You have to go to where they have been dispatched. Angels are working for God. They are working for the kingdom of God every day. They ascend and they descend. And the Bible said in Revelation 5 and Revelation 8 that they carry the prayers of the saints into heaven. They dump those prayers out before the Lord. That's why the angel came to Daniel in chapter 10 and said, I am here for thy words. He came for the words of Daniel, the prayers of Daniel, to carry them up to heaven and dump them out before the Lord. When you pray to God, angels carry your prayers up into the atmosphere, into the throne room of heaven, and dump those out in the presence of the Lord. That's in your Bible. And then there's the demonic dimension. That's a lovely place. And we all know about how hell works and the spirits of hell that are sent to people. And then there's the human dimension. I believe those two dimensions are very near each other because if the human spirit was so much stronger than the demonic spirit, nobody would ever be possessed. If your human spirit could fight off demons that come at you, there would never be a story of the legion of demons inside the man in the Bible. There would never be the boy that was thrown to the fire, into the water, if his human spirit was strong enough to push the devils away. But obviously the human spirit by itself is not just strong enough if it tries to rely on its own strength of a pack of demons are sent at the human spirit. Everybody has a human spirit. I'm not talking about your flesh, your body. You have a human spirit also. And I believe your spirit precedes you. Ever walked into a room and you looked at someone and you could tell they didn't like you? And you never even met them? You don't have to say a word. When you walk in, they can just, a certain look, and you're like, that person over there, I just have a bad feeling. Your human spirit doesn't connect with their human spirit. These are the dimensions of the spirit world. It's very real. 
There's just as many angels and, and out there as you probably would see human beings. There, there's demons out there. Your spirit is, is real inside your body, and God's spirit is real. And whether you agree with any of that stuff or not, it's true. There are angels, there are demons, there are human spirits, and there is the spirit of God. The Bible talked about men and their spirits. So you have all these dimensions operating at the same time. And one night, Jacob is laying down, and he goes to sleep, and he has a dream. And their angels of the Lord are ascending and descending upon this ladder, and they're walking up the ladder to God and and then you know the story he wakes up and said this is the house of God I the Lord was in this place and I knew it not and and then later on Jacob in the middle of the night as he's in a, a crossroads of his life he he's walking alone and an angel the Lord comes down jumps off the ladder and comes down into into the earth and grabs Jacob and they begin to wrestle all night long and the Bible said that they wrestle till the breaking of the day and the angel said you've got to let me go because I've got to leave right now why because those angels are assigned for certain moments and times, and angels ascend and descend at the breaking of the day. That's why it's important, hear me everybody, to have an early morning prayer life. Well, I got about seven claps on that. If angels are carrying your prayers into heaven, and the Bible specifically records that he says, let me go, I've got to go, the day breaketh, then the, the greatest time you can be sending prayers up is before the day breaks, so when the angels come down and up, they grab your prayer and take them before the Lord. Now, I know I'm going to offend some people on this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I am sick and tired of hearing this. Why can't God answer at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Like 4 in the morning? Yes, he can, but you know what you're saying? I don't want to sacrificially pray. If you work a midnight shift, I'm not talking to you. But to every normal person that's got a normal job, you hear me. The reason why you want to pray at 4 in the afternoon and not 4 in the morning is because it's less sacrificial and it's easier on the flesh. Because it's difficult to get up at four when the, the fluffy pillows and the comforter's nice and warm and walk out in your living room and say, bring on the warfare in the name of Jesus. Order everything about my day. Order my conversation, where I go, who I talk to. I don't have all of you stirred up, but I'm telling the truth right now. You get a real prayer life. I promise you, you'll know this is real. Well, I can... I can pray. Yes, you can, and I pray at all times of the day. But I'll tell you the most important time of the day to pray. You want angelic attention. I have seen more prayers answered on the same day when I pray at 4 or 5 in the morning than praying at noon. Now, I'll pray at noon. And I'll pray in the evening. But in the morning time, that's when you get your direction. That's when you order everything that's going to happen in your day. That's when you pray about every situation. I'm telling you, I regret it when I don't pray early in the morning. My wife regrets it. When I don't, the worst thing I could ever do is not pray in the morning before a flight. When you have a 4.30 or 5 o'clock flight to Nashville... And you think I can just pray on the fly and you end up 18 hours across the country. You know you should have been up at 2.30. Covering all this stuff. Early morning prayer is powerful. I believe everybody, if you can't pray in the morning, should try from tonight on to have a prayer life every day the rest of your life. Can I tell you as bluntly and as humbly as I can at the same time, your prayer life is more important than the meeting you have, what kind of raise you can get, how awesome your car is. A prayer life, a relationship with God. I know I'm in a miracle season with you right now, but I'm telling you, your relationship with God is more important than God even doing miracles among you. Last week I'm praying, and as I'm praying, can I, can, I, can I just tell what happened? I just feel nervous about telling this stuff to a group of people. One-on-one, -on -one, I'm good. I'm just, I don't know everybody out here. I don't know all the haters that are in the room. <laughs> I know you're here, but I just don't know who you are. <laughs> but but um, praying, and all of a sudden I just see it. Early morning prayer is a ladder. 
It's a ladder. Every time you get up and pray in the morning, whatever dimension you're in in the spirit, that when you get on that, when you get up and pray early and you could sleep, but you decide to get in the spirit, you climb in that dimension. You climb in whatever area. There's different, I know we talk about the word dimensions and levels, but this is really true. There are different seasons or you can use the word you want, levels or dimensions that God will send you into. There's, there, there's power dimensions where miracles start happening in a church for a week or a month or by the way, if you want them to extend, you've got to stay consecrated. Or else a year from now, you'll be saying, remember when God raised that lady from the dead? That was awesome. What's happened since then? So, so consecration is massive on keeping the thing going. Staying in the spirit, living in the spirit. And so there's power dimensions, there's favor dimensions where it seems like out of nowhere God starts opening the doors, connecting you to the right people. God may be blessing you financially. These are dimensions where you know out of, out of nowhere God just started doing all kinds of stuff for you. I can guarantee there are people in the room right now that can tell you stories of where everything was going wrong and out of nowhere, boom, 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 boom. God just did all these things and opened all the right doors. That's a season or a dimension of the favor of God. There's dimensions of revelation where God's like you read your Bible for six months every day. And by the way, you should have a, a, a Bible reading life. Am I in an apostolic church? Believe it or not, this is not just for when the preacher gets up to read his text. And it's not just for show that I've got one with me. This is a weapon that does no good when it's inside the sheath. And too many people are fighting devils in their flesh with their sword all wrapped up. You need to whip out the sword every single day just to let hell know that I've got this. No matter what you bring against me, I can bring this open anytime I want to and hear the voice of the master that will quiet and silence everything you're saying to me. So the word of God is, is a massive Massive weapon that you use. And Revelation, you can read your Bible for six weeks and, and be, and I, I get nervous when people say, the Bible's so boring. First of all, get out of Leviticus. If you're even in it. Secondly, read with some hunger. Because it's alive. If you only do it because I just have to do it, you're not going to get it. But if you open it up looking for God to talk to you, he'll talk to you. In other words, don't stop reading till you get something from it. If you read a chapter and nothing's spoken, read another chapter. Because if you really want to hear the voice of God, you, the word of God will speak. I get nervous when people always hear the voice of God everywhere, but they never read their Bible. The word of God is the supreme authority as the, as the voice of God in your life. If what you heard from God is not backed up by the word of God, you didn't hear from God. If what you hear in the spirit contradicts the word of God, well, I'll be my own pastor. Well, that just turned the wicked left turn, didn't it? I don't need Pastor Jordan. You better be careful because what you're hearing is contradicting. Because God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It means the believers, not those that, that were lost, but those that already were believing. God said the believers need a preacher in their life to tell them right from wrong. I promise you that hell agrees with me. Paul said, when I leave you, no doubt, grievous wolves will enter the flock. You know what he's saying? Those wolves don't dare come near you as long as I'm here. But the second the preacher walks out, hell walks in. You need a man of God in your life. Every, well, I don't know why I'm on that, but I'm just telling the truth. You need the man of God. You need to have a submitted spirit to your pastor. I'm going to hit it till your bill breaks. That word is real, and it's alive. And there's different dimensions that God will take you into. Now, I'm just going to tell you what he showed me, and you can, you can just do what you want. But he said, early morning prayer is your ladder. 
Whatever dimension you're in, that's how you climb in that dimension. The spirit world is, is very real. The angels are there. The demons of hell come to fight you, especially when you're being used of God. The demons of hell know who you are. Just ask the sons of Sceva. They, they thought they could do it with other people's anointing and authority. And the devil said, we know Jesus, we know Paul, but we don't know who you are. You don't have a prayer life. If we, you were walking in the spirit, we'd know who you are. But we don't know you because you're trying to use someone else's anointing as your authority. So you've got to have your own walk. And so uh, he said, this, this, this ladder is what you climb every time you pray. You climb in that dimension, and you pray, and you climb, and you pray. And the more you do it consistently, the higher you will climb in that dimension. He said, and when you want to go to the next level, this is what he told me, that there are doorways to each dimension. He said there are doorways in the spirit world to the next level you want to go to. And the doorway is sacrifice. What do you mean? Climbing the ladder every day praying is awesome. But then out of nowhere, you'll be praying. I'm just going to talk to the spiritual people. You'll be praying every day for a month or two months every morning at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. You've been consistent. You're praying. You're writing stuff down. Sometimes you're getting a breakthrough. Sometimes you're not. But you're being consistent. Out of nowhere, God says, go on a three-day fast. Go on a seven-day fast. I mean, not eating. Oh, I would never do that. You're praying an hour a day, and all of a sudden you get this urge to pray all night. Am I talking to anybody alive in here? You're, 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 you're doing something, and all of a sudden God puts a desire in your spirit to sacrifice in a way that you make normally you don't normally do this, but all of a sudden you, you just feel the urge to, to sacrifice to God a certain way. You know what's going on? You're in a doorway of a new dimension, and God is trying to get you through the door, and the dumbest thing you can do is say, well, one day I'm going to pray all night long. One day I'm going to go on a three-day fast. You know what you just say? when You know what's going on when you say that? You're telling the spirits from the other world. You're telling those devils, I'm not coming right now. He's not coming. He just said one day he'll do it. The urge is in your, the Bible said God will give you the desire of your heart. The actual desire, not I want a new car. That's not what he's talking about. But the thing that you desire to do spiritually is actually put in you by the word of God. And so when you feel an urge to go on a journey in the spirit and go beyond your flesh, you didn't come up with that. The devil didn't give that to you. God is trying to take you into another dimension of the spirit but you've got to say if it's there let me go after it while I can sometimes God will tell you to do something crazy God it's, it's never gonna be the same thing every time it's something specifically designed for that dimension whenever you're going to a dimension of favor God might have you God might put on your heart to give sacrificially in some kind of area and all of a sudden you're like why do I feel this urge to do that because God is getting ready to give favor to you and you can't out give God so God has a doorway you do this God provides this there's all kind of dimensions in the spirit that are there but you have to want it because I know a lot of people that will brag about the miraculous but have no walk with God so when you get ready to go to a new level in the spirit God will have something a doorway and by the way but listen here's some here's some signs you're about to go through a new door ready here's some here's some big red flags you're about to go into a new dimension. Number one, your flesh will get cut before you go through the door. Because you can't go to the next level in the spirit world with the same amount of flesh you've got. How can you elevate in the spirit world with the same amount of flesh you have? How can you elevate in the spirit world and keep the same level of carnality? Oh, you may think it's crazy. But hell rolls its eyes when people think they're going somewhere in God, but they don't have to pray, don't have to fast, don't have to be faithful in the church, don't have to pay their tithes. They don't, all these things they don't have to do, and yet they think they're in this powerful level with God. Right. 
And I promise you that when you get to that place in the spirit where God, God requires something of you and cuts your flesh, it's because he's getting ready to connect you to something greater. They're at the Jordan River getting ready to step into the promised land for the first time after 400 and I'm at 70 years, after 40 years of walking around and 430 years of bondage. And right before the promised land, God said, stop, circumcise all those boys. You got too much flesh to get in the promised land. Abraham, I've got a promise for you that everything you have, all your seed, is going to inherit the world. But before I give it to you, take your boy to Moriah. Because every man of God will have a Mariah. Listen to me. Every child of God that has something in their future has to conquer Mariah. It's the place where God said, put it on the altar and lay it down in front of me. And if you will do what I tell you to do, I can give you what I promised to give you. <sighs> Problem with us, a lot of us look up at Mariah. And I just don't want to make that journey. And we stay at that same level, at the top of that last dimension, and we never go through the door and experience what God has for us in the next dimension. Moses was getting ready. God promised him he was going to lead all the people out of Egypt. I mean, God was doing some pretty cool stuff. He's got the, the stick turning into a snake. He's got, he's got the left, putting his hand in his chest, pulling it out, leprosy. I mean, this, he's at a burning bush. This is a pretty cool day, I'd say. Most of us would have that moment and say, that was the highlight of my life. I met God in the desert. God started a little fire, which, by the way, is a powerful revelation. The Bible said Moses saw it and turned and said, I will go and see this great sight. That was the test right there. When God starts little fires... There's two kinds of people, those that glance and keep going with their carnality. We had a good church service. What did the preacher preach? I can't remember. You're at the restaurant 30 minutes after church. And then those that go and glare and say, this might be a small fire, but something about that fire has my attention there's two kinds of groups in every church service. When the spirit starts moving, the one group that's like, yeah, it was good. I clap because he asked me to clap. I'm just sitting here taking up my space. And the other group that says, I have got to get... I have got to get where that spirit is at. I have got to touch that fire. I've got to be in the presence of God. I've got to get more than what I'm at right now. And Moses gets all this awesome supernatural stuff, and then on the way to Egypt, God, if it wasn't for Moses' wife, was about to kill Moses because he didn't circumcise his son. There had to be a cutting of the flesh, even though God had promised him all this stuff. There's, you're walking in a new level, Moses. You're walking in less flesh for new dimensions. You want to walk in the spirit? You want to see angels? You want God to talk to you in dreams? You want God to speak to you in ways he's never spoken to you? I check what's carnal in your life and check what's spiritual and weigh the list. Well, it's going to get quiet in here, but can I just preach like I'm teaching right now, but I feel a preaching spirit getting on me. If you spend five hours on the Internet and five seconds in the Word of God, You don't have to clap your hands. We know who your God is. If you know every single song that's out there on the radio station, but you don't know what they're singing in the house of God, it's because your mind and your focus has been given to something carnal. I know we're not shouting, but I'm digging the spirit world stirring right now. I promise you that there's a place where you have to recognize this cannot go into the next level. This cannot live in the next dimension. If I'm going to see the things that God wants me to see, I've got to kill this and remove that to step into this. These dimensions. Another massive sign you're walking to a new dimension is when your covering lays hands on you. 
for no reason at all. I'm not talking about if you're sick and pastor prays for you or you need a job and pastor prays. But pastor all of a sudden gets up in the middle of the night because he's got a burden for you. Calls you and says, I'm praying for you. Or walks up to you in the church for no reason and lays hands on you and doesn't stop praying. You know why? Because you're about to go into a new dimension. And you want to go into your new level covered. It's a dangerous thing to step into a new dimension of the spirit world uncovered. I'd rather step into the dimension that God wants me to go into with the elders over my life covering me as I go in because those spirits are going to see them with me and not me by myself. Let me just tell you what happened last week. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into it right now, but at, we had a conference a couple weeks ago, and at the conference, Gentry, you were there, at the conference, these things that I'm telling you happened to me. The first night of the conference, you were there when my pastor in front of 3,000 people grabbed my hand in the middle of the preacher's message and held my hand and began to wail over me for 20 minutes praying over me. After a while, I thought, wow, what's going on here? Because everyone had already stopped. They had prayed for each other, but he would not let go of my hand. Kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, wailing, speaking in tongues over me. The next night, he cuts me in front of the people, corrects my message. The next night, one of my other, two other elders, Jack Cunningham, walks up to me and in front of everyone lays hands on me and says, I give you everything that I have. And the last night, Lee Stone King walks up to me, my third elder in my life. My pastor and those two men are my covering, have been for years. And that he walks up and lays hands on me and imparts faith and dimensions of raising the dead. And two days later, I'm in a service on Sunday morning, and a 17-year-old boy walks to the altar trying to get the Holy Ghost and starts vomiting blood and falls over and dies and is dead for eight minutes. And me and Gentry go over there to him, and we touched his chest. And as we touched him, God raised him from the dead. Don't tell me that when you walk into a new dimension you should do it on your own when you get covered you get connected to what God wants you to be and what God wants you to do So when you get covered by the man of God, when the man of God lays hands on you and begins to pray with you and begins to war with you, something's going on. You've been praying. You've been searching. You've been seeking. And now you're at that top of that level, and you're at a doorway, and you're at that doorway, and all of a sudden the man of God ushers you in. Why? Because he operates in a higher level than you do. And so when he brings you up to that next dimension, thank God for it and stay underneath your covering and stay connected to your covering because hell respects him because that man thrives in that dimension that you're just stepping into. You with me? And the tendency, when you step into a new level in the spirit, when you get a breakthrough and you know, man, that's not normal. You feel the favor of God on you or the power of God. You start seeing crazy stuff. I was seeing thousands of people get baptized. I was seeing thousands get baptized. Over a three or four year period, I saw eight or 10,000 people baptized in America. I was seeing hundreds get the Holy Ghost. But then Jack Cunningham laid his hands on me two years ago. And the next service, I saw 83 get the Holy Ghost. And before long, within one year, 2,000 had received the Holy Ghost. Now in two years, over four or five Almost 5,000 people have received the Holy Ghost. I didn't do anything special, but my covering laid his hand on me, and it took me into a new level. And if you don't believe it, just ask Paul when he said, Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you when I laid my hands on you. He said, Timothy, you only operate the way you operate because there was a day when I put my hand on your head and when I touched you, God put something in you. Now it's time to stir up that thing that you can walk in that when you're covering, put his hands on you. Hmm. 
Now, the tendency, we're getting ready to stop it here. The tendency, when you get to a new level, is to get swarmed by the enemy. You heard the statement, new levels, new devils. And the tendency is to cut the ladder off at your feet that got you there. Have you ever been through a season of prayer where you're praying real good? Got a good, awesome breakthrough or a miracle? Then tried to stir up that prayer life again? And it was like the hardest thing in the world to do? Four of you. I must be missing it tonight. You know why? When you enter a new dimension, it's hard to keep your old prayer life going. You know why? Because the ladder that got you to this level, the first few days or weeks, you try to go back to early morning prayer, it's not climbing. It's pulling the ladder up from the last dimension. So it's work to position your prayer life the way you positioned your prayer life at the last level. And the reason why some people hear me, they get to this level in the spirit and then they stop getting this so consecrated and they stop praying like they used to pray is because it's harder to get up and pray now. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And they have no clue that every demon on that level, their mission is to knock you off the ladder. Every spirit, every argument, every, every bit of exhaustion, every bit of stress, every bit of anxiety, everything that stirs up at 12 o'clock at night, there's one reason the devil does it. Because if you get up at 4 and you start climbing, you're telling him that what you are cannot stop me from going beyond you. And so I'm going to climb above you. And so hell does everything it can. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now to stop you from getting a walk with God that's deeper than any dimension you've ever been in before. The hardest time for me is when I step into a new dimension in the spirit because then all of a sudden, I have, it's like my prayer life's out of sorts. It's like I, I'm trying to find time to pray. My travel days are crazy. Kids are acting up for no reason. I'm trying to do my normal, my normal devotion, and I can't get through it because something's going on. I'm tired beyond time. I'm worn out. What's going on? God, you just did crazy stuff. I don't feel like I'm sinning. I don't feel condemned. I just feel exhausted. Because I'm not climbing. I'm pulling that ladder up. Because I'm letting hell know that what got me here is going to take me beyond here. And that prayer life that you get will take you to places in the spirit and the deep things of God and the secret things of God. Only God reveals spiritually. They've got to come when you show God some consistency that it might be an awesome Sunday night service, but on Monday morning, I'm going to be up and I'm going to lay before you and I'm going to talk to you. You're my best friend. I'm going to show the devil. I'm not just going to be one of those Sunday worshiping on fire people, but on Monday when no one's around, I'm going to be praying on the floor. You know why a lot of people, oh, this is going to scare me to say this. You know why a lot of people don't get up and pray early in the morning? Because there's no audience in the living room at 4 o'clock. There's no altar. There's no music in the background at 4.30 unless you put it on yourself. It's hard to create your own altar call. You see, it's easy to go to the altar when the preacher preaches to you and says, come forward and pray, and you're feeling God move on you, and you're, you're wide awake. That's not hard. What's difficult is that tomorrow morning when there's no preacher and there's no one on your pew that's a prayer warrior saying, let's go pray. I promise you, you're not shouting, but the spirit world is very nervous because if this church grabs what I'm giving you right now as a body, you can go to places you've never dreamed of. I'm telling you keys right now in the spirit. You can go to places, not just corporately, but individually in the spirit you've never been to. I'm telling you, you've not seen the things God wants to show you. You've yet to have your greatest dreams, your greatest encounters with an angel. You've yet to see the hand of God move in your life the way God wants to move. But I have a question for you tomorrow morning. 
morning, can you get up and can you push your flesh out of the way and say, Lord, here I am. I want more of you. I want to reach closer to you. I've got to have something from you I've never seen before. Climb the ladder. Climb the ladder. Climb the ladder. Don't be satisfied saying, God, well, we saw God raise the dead. We saw God do it. And I'm so thankful God did. I'm so thankful to see that lady here tonight. I'm so thankful I got to see it with my own eyes in Sacramento a couple weeks ago. I'm so thankful I've got to see it. I'm so thankful. But if a miracle is what moves me to pray then I'm a reactionary warrior and I only move when God does stuff for me and I see God as Santa and I praise him when he gives me presents. But a warrior will get up because he knows I don't know what's going to happen today. I don't know what car is going to try to come at me. I don't know what person is going to try to influence my kid at school. I don't know what person is going to try to attack me at work. I don't know who hates my guts. I don't know what's going on around here. I don't know what the devil has planned or what God has planned. So before I get around any human spirits, Before I get up and want to argue with my wife, I'm going to get up and worship the Lord. That way my spirit's right, and I'm not going to hang on to the anger or the wrath. I'm talking to someone right now. Listen to me. You want to walk with God? Get a relationship with God that's more important than any relationship with people that you have, and that connection will work on your other connections in a way you've never imagined before. Let's stand right now and feel the Holy Spirit. It's a secret in the spirit world how to go to different levels. Your consistency in the prayer room. Fasting one day a week isn't in vain. God's telling you to fast one day a week. You're doing that consistent. That's not in vain. Reading that three chapters, five chapters a day, you think it's no big. That's not in vain. You're doing something consistently. Keep climbing the ladder. Keep climbing the ladder. Keep climbing the ladder. Then all of a sudden, one day it might be, because different dimensions are different sizes. Seasons are different. The Bible says he changes the times and the seasons. So he can, he can make something last longer or make something shorter. Hear me. He has the ability to make a season of discouragement, a season of attack, shorter. He can make the wilderness experience longer. He can do all kind of things, but he can do a lot more for you if you get up every day and you get in the spirit. And he said, before I walk out of the door, I'm not walking out in the flesh. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. you got to understand you're, under, you're wrestling against wickedness and, and spiritual wickedness and high play. You're, you're, you're wrestling things you can't see. There are things against you right now you'll never see with your eyes. So I, I close with this. So about a month ago, as I've been in Ellis prayer, I was doing fasting. I tried to start doing increased fasting. Not, I, I'd done a lot of long fasts, but I, the Lord started telling me to take it to another level. And not just fast with juice, but just fast with water. And so I started trying to fast. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, have, I didn't have this revelation that I'm telling you. I just thought God was telling me to sacrifice more. And so I'm just trying to sacrifice. Trying to sac- then I'll, I'm in Alaska, and I'm laying, I'm laying in bed one night, getting ready to preach. And as I'm laying in there, I, I, I feel something push me down. I thought it was my wife. I open up my eyes, and, and my wife's laying asleep. And something is pushing me down on my bed and there's a spirit in my room physically pushing me down I scream the name of Jesus and it lifts off me then two weeks later I'm in Alexandria Louisiana and at the conference and I'm asleep in bed and as I'm asleep something comes across me and I'm not gonna try to freak you out but it hits me in the face two different times physically hits me in the face I wake up screaming Jesus I could see it move out of the room then two nights ago Something as I'm laying in bed crawls up behind me. I could feel it touch. I said, In the name of Jesus, and rebuked it, command to leave. I started thinking about it. The, the day before all this happened, when Pastor laid hands on me, when Pastor did what he did, when the men of God laid hands on me, a preacher told me, a preacher, a preacher walked up to me and said, You're at a doorway. He said, Exact words were, You're at a threshold. 
and you need to pray for God to trust you at the next level. I said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. The next preacher gets up and preaches, and he says, someone's at a door right now. God's going to get you through it. Okay, thank the Lord. And then it all began. And it comes clear to me now. Those spirits in this dimension, they're challenging the authority God's giving me. To see how I react, because if I step out and get in the flesh when they show up in the room and get afraid or get nervous, it's because I will for, I'll forfeit my spiritual authority. Because you forfeit every ounce of authority you have spiritually the second you step into the flesh. You can have dominion over every spirit in your house, but if the spirit can make you argue with your wife, you just step into the flesh, and now the demons can walk through the door because you have forfeited your spiritual dominion and authority and said, I'll try to take it in the flesh. Spiritual dominion only works when you're in the spirit. So when spirits come to attack you, that's why some of you can't figure out why you're having these horrible dreams. You're not watching stuff, but you go to sleep, and it's a, it's a, it's a living nightmare, and you wake up more exhausted than, you, than you, when you fell asleep. You're drained. I'll tell you why. The spirits are coming at you. They think you're vulnerable while you're sleeping, but you hear this preacher, as of tonight, thus saith the Lord, I will cover you with my angels. I will block the demonic power from coming against you, but die into my word. Die into my presence. I will heal your mind. I will erase the images that hell has tried to blanket your spirit with. Somebody get in the spirit. Stop trying to take the devil on the devil's way. Ask Eve and Adam. It doesn't work. Stop trying to challenge Delilah in the flesh, Samson. Get in the spirit. Get in the spirit. Use what God gave you. Get your prayer life back right now. Get your consecration back right now. I promise you, if you will take this individually, what God will do for you corporately will blow your mind this year when you as a body get in the spirit like you never have. I see a lot of young men in the altar, but I'm preaching to more than young men. There's some ladies in here that need to get a prayer life. There's some intercessors. You're not using your gift, and you're always depressed. You know why? Depression is the main signal to go into intercession. Ask Billy Cole. His wife taught me this, that depression is the main signal that you're an intercessor. If you're constantly discouraged and anxiety and stressed out, it's because you have a gift deep inside you. You need to activate that spirit of intercession and get in the place with God that you've never Never dreamed of, but you've got to step from the flesh and what you see around you and to see what God can show you by walking in the Spirit. Altar open everywhere. Somebody pull up the ladder. Somebody climb. Somebody go through the doorway. Somebody go through the doorway. Somebody go to another level. You can't operate in 2016 the way you did in 2010. You got more spirits attacking you than you did then. Come on. Don't use yesterday's anointing for tomorrow's enemy. Come on. Get in a place that you've never been to before. Tell God, I want to hear you like I've never heard you. Walk with me. Take a journal in your prayer life. Get a pen and a journal tomorrow morning. And when God starts talking to you this week it might be once this week it might be twice but when he starts talking write everything down that he says you'll be able to see it when you've had the encounter with God and three months from now or six months from now when you're discouraged you can open up your journal and you can remember that day when God talked to you hear me I'm trying to help you get in the spirit walk in the spirit For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
They're not carnal. If you're carnal, you're not going to connect with me right now. If you don't pray and you're not going to, I'm not talking to the guests, but if you're a saint here and you don't pray, I'm not connecting with you right now. But if you want to pray, you've got to start talking right now. The door's open right now to talk to the Lord. Don't wait on tomorrow. Don't say, well, I'll try. That, that never works. You've got to make it the top priority of your day to talk to your God, to read his word, to walk in the spirit. Make it the most important thing. Nothing else matters if I don't do this. These are secrets on how to thrive in the spirit world. If you're just getting hammered left and right by the enemy, you're living at a lower level in that dimension that you should. You've got to start climbing. If the devil's knocking you around every single day with anxiety and stress and fear and worry and doubt, you've got to climb the ladder. You've got to climb the ladder. You've got to climb the ladder. Hell wants nothing more than you to give up your prayer life. Hell wants nothing more than you to look spiritual at church but be completely disconnected all through the week. He revealeth the deep and the secret things. Deep calleth unto deep. I took a chance preaching this to you. How far do you want to go? How close do you want to get to him? If you can only hear his voice when he yells at you and commands you like, a, like an army general to get back in line, there's danger near. Get back in church. If you only hear that voice, it's because you're not walking with him every day. You'll learn to hear his whisper. You'll learn to hear his whisper. But you got to walk with him every day. you got to get up and make him the most important thing. Listen to me. The one thing I can promise you, you get up and pray every morning, God will come to hear you. He will come to hear you. He hears prayer. He hears He will come down. Once he sees you're serious, he will be there. Someone's going to grab this. Someone's going to activate this, and hell's going to have a bad day. Hell's losing somebody's future right now. There's a warrior in the making right now. Someone's about to become an intercessor. Somebody's about to be a warrior. There's a man of God being formed right now in here. There's a threat to hell. Somebody carnal is getting connected and hell's worried because you've been disconnected for a while. But you're about to walk in places you've never walked in. Peter, there are dimensions. You can go deep, but you can't do it with a boat. you got to walk on the water. There are dimensions in the deep, but you can't have that boat. You've got to step out. You've got to step out and pursue him like you've never pursued him. When the deep calls, you've got to get out of the boat. The only way to go in the deep, you've got to learn to walk. It's going to be lonely. It's going, to, it's going to take some effort. You're going to be tired. You don't have to pray five hours tomorrow morning. You've got to go to work. But you ought to get up before you go to work and put everything at your job in the hands of God. 
every one on your job in the hands of God. Every conversation in the hands of God. The speed of your vehicle, every single thing, everywhere you, every red light, put everything in the hand of God. And walk with him. Walk with him. Walk with him. Walk with him. Walk with him to the deep places where the secrets of the Spirit are revealed. Where he whispers revelations to you that have you so stirred up. Where he talks to you about things that you've never seen your whole life. Where he shows you things in the Word. Verses you've read a thousand times jump off the page. And speak something to you you've never seen because you're climbing the ladder. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you have the Holy Ghost, would you pray in the Spirit right now? Would you pray in the Spirit? Why? Because hell can understand the language you're praying in right now. The devil does not understand the language of the Spirit. That's why his, his, his astrologers and Belshazzars, his, his main men, they couldn't understand what was written on the wall because they don't understand the language of the Spirit. But Daniel said, I know what that language is. I can tell you what God's saying. The devil doesn't understand the language of the Spirit. When you pray in the Spirit, you confuse the enemy. You don't even know what you're praying right now. You could be praying for angels to come down. Divine intervention in a situation that you know about or don't know about. But pray in the Spirit. Stir up that spirit world right now to where demons are uncomfortable and angels grab their swords. Hallelujah. 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 There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so they that are in the flesh cannot please God but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live after through the spirit, you do mortify the deeds of the flesh of the body and you shall live. For as many are as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Wherefore we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. 
Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. somebody I challenge you to never be the same again I challenge you to walk in places in God you've been intimidated to even go near I challenge you to step into the deep I challenge you to ignore all the things wrong with your flesh and step in the spirit Who knows? It might be dimensions of favor. It might be dimensions of power or revelation. There's different things in different levels. Angels of war go into the dimensions of favor. Angels of battle and war go into dimensions of power. Angels that give messages, speaking angels, go into the dimension of revelation. These are all kind of things you can see in your word of God. This is what happens. There's Gabriel. There's Michael. There's different kinds of warring angels out there. When you step into different seasons in the spirit, God can activate things for you. For the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. That word encampeth means to surround like a circle. The angel literally bends itself. That's what it literally means in the Hebrew. The angel bends itself to surround all the areas that you're in. In other words, it covers the front, the back, the sides. The angel bends itself to cover every step you take. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. In other words, God orders every step. God orders what can get to to you and what can't get near you when the angel of the Lord is surrounding you. But you've got to Fear that, Lord. You've got to fear the Lord with all your heart. You've got to have that walk with him to activate that dimension. And deliver them. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. careful to entertain strangers for some thereby and entertain angels unaware come on eye hath not seen ear hath not heard the things God's going to reveal to you
Hell is very worried about some of you right now. You're praying with a searching in your spirit. Seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The word of God said, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word rewarder in the Greek is mestopodates. It means the one who pays your wages or your boss. The one who's responsible for taking care of you. He only becomes that when you diligently seek him. Oh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Heaven and earth.